Mick Yamanaka. Mick, fill us in on why all the success at your club, North Shore, in uh, in just the last couple years, and why your guys' men's Epe um, crew in particular continues to, to make such big gains. Uh, well, I would attribute it to like uh, the kind of uh, the club, the community sense. We have a lot of coaches there. Uh, Alex Tennis, Marad, uh, Israeli, and uh, Vladimir Goffman. Uh, we do have like our main coach, but no one's really afraid to like step in, uh, help, give advice. Like uh, Marat and Vladimir both coach me, and I get advice from Alex oftentimes when he practices with us. So it's uh, a lot of different uh, like perspectives that put together. It helps a lot. What What are some of the the drills that you guys work on consistently that I guess provide you like really good situational examples of what to expect in a competition? Uh, a lot of the focus is on like uh, like uh, situational bouting. So uh, let's say we'll have uh, a situation where one side is down three one, and then you will fence to five. So like a situation in a tournament where it might not look so good, but in practice you've gone over it, you know how to break it down, and go from there from the situation, try to come back. So like a lot of the situational bouting. Is helpful. In you know at a big event like this, summer nationals, how how do you feel? you're able to lean on that training and use it to kind of give you confidence in those exact situations or throughout the tournament as a whole? Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with like uh, muscle memory, right? Like just doing it over and over again, uh, training with also different opponents at the club and uh, just getting a sense of uh, this is what I do, uh, this is what I have to do in this situation and just moving it to a different setting. So obviously there's going to be those jitters in the beginning, but after you get into it, your muscle memory should take an effect. Now you you in particular, what's your favorite drill? Uh, I like the one-touch drills. Those probably are the, the hardest, because you literally can lose to anyone. And also uh, at a tournament, they can often come down to one single touch that can determine the bout. So uh, I also enjoy the pressure that comes with it. So I, I like those the best. So who gives you the, I guess, the most difficulty in those particular drills in practice? Um, Alex is actually often practices with us, and he's, uh, he's pretty much a master at the one touches. Like he knows how to get in your head, and uh, he gets those one touches pretty often. Now another name you mentioned is, is your team clubmate Ivan, yes. who won the the Div One event yeah. yesterday. Um, what what do you think allowed Ivan to have success yesterday throughout that particular tableau and his path to the finals? Well, I think Ivan's obviously, he's, he's really tall, he's strong and uh, fast for his height. But also I think yeah, he's been working on his like mental state, keeping cool. Uh, throughout the day yesterday, he didn't really lose his calm. Uh, even when down, he kept his composure. And, you know, I think it's like not only about beating your opponent, but like survival. He maintained his own mental state. And with that, he just kept surviving until like he won the entire tournament. And now you did? Did you fence a Div One event yesterday? I did. A have you fenced in other events this weekend? No, not yet. H how have you felt about your fencing so far, and some of those same things you described of Ivan's fencing? Um, obviously not that great. Uh, I didn't do so well, actually. Focusing on the performance here, not the result. All right. Uh, Performance-wise, I think I lost some of that mental state Ivan was able to keep. So but I'm actually fencing tomorrow for the junior, so I'm hoping to try to get it together for that. It is the mental component of your fencing game something that you you focus on a lot? Like maybe you in particular with your fencing or at practice? Yeah, I would say so because uh, physically I'm not that like uh, competitive with other fencers. So I really rely on like technique, footwork, and uh, my mental state to try to overcome those strong enemies. How do you do that? Is it like meditation or is it through using those situational drills? Um, I'd say it's like a mixture. Also, it uh, has a lot to do with like confidence, uh, not being afraid to do actions that you practice with against uh, stronger, bigger people. So. Uh, and is that like absence of fear come through just preparation or is it just because you understand that regardless of the result, oh, yeah. ultimately you're getting better? De definitely like preparation, like how hard you practice and prepare for this event will contribute to how confident you are. All right, so with that, uh, you're going to Columbia yes. in the fall. Uh, Columbia coming off two consecutive national championships. Uh, the men's team, Ivy League champions consistently. They're bringing in a ton of more recruits to continue yes. that, that tradition of success. 
What is uh, most exciting for you to, to head to Columbia in the fall? Uh, well, uh, I haven't done many uh, team events, so I'm looking forward to being part of like a, a really large team, much larger team than I am right now, and uh, training together and try to accomplish this one goal that like continuing the NCAA titles. Who are you most excited to become teammates with? Uh, Gabe Cano. Gabe Cano. Gabe Cano. What is it about Cano that, that excites you, either like pers personality or fencing? Uh, Fencing-wise, he's a very competitive fencer, like a very difficult opponent, so I can strive towards him. And uh, as a person, he's really chill. He's just like a really awesome guy. To be with. And he's, he's a rising sophomore, right? Rising junior. A rising junior. Yes. So you'll have two years overlapping. Yes. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much, and best of luck at Columbia. Thank you.